my dearly beloved. I bring you greetings from Pacoima First United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Dr. Lydia Waters, and we are just so happy, happy that you have joined our worship. And so we're going to ask that you all gather around and prepare your mind, your soul, and your body, and your strength to hear a word from the Lord. Do you have your Bibles? Get your Bibles. And we're going to begin with a song of praise to the Lord, our God. We welcome our minister of music, Sister Hope Carr, accompanied by her husband, Brother Darnell Carr. We're going to sing praises to God. Because you know what we say, when praises go up, blessings come down. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. From every nation and tongue From generation to generation We worship you Hallelujah, hallelujah lesson for today is found in the New Testament gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. And listen now, listen for the word of the Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you come to me. But Jesus answered him, let it be now for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now won't you pray with and for me? Almighty God, as I stand before your people today, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will, my will be lost. In thine, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray it. Let everybody say, Amen. Our sermon topic for today is, 
It is time to please God. It's time to please God. Beloved, today our gospel message comes to help us understand what it means to please God. Oh, we talk a lot about pleasing people when we need to be talking about pleasing God today. In the midst of all of this political turmoil, this pandemic, all of the record-breaking weather reports, all of the crazy things happening in our world today, we want to establish the fact that it is possible and it is time today to please God Almighty. God will never be left on the back burner. He's a jealous God. And so the question today is this. Is God pleased with us today? And it is important to know that it is possible for us to please God. And most of us do not bring to mind that it is possible to please God. But with some, we tend to overlook this. This is the fact that if it's possible to please God, it's also possible to displease God. Oh, yes, God can be displeased. And to understand that, all we must do is to go to the Old Testament now and read the first three chapters of the book of Genesis. And we can see what occurred in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Oh, yeah. God can be displeased. But we are here this morning to learn how we can please God because our purpose in this life as Christians is to please God. Seek first the kingdom of God and all other things will work out. And so in our gospel lesson, God says concerning Jesus, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Oh, 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 Lord, I want God to say that about me. This is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Isn't that what you want to hear? Well done, my good and faithful child. Well done. What does this text teach us then about pleasing? Well, first of all, God was well pleased with Jesus because Jesus was committed to his mission, his purpose in life, his calling. Jesus was committed to his assignment from God. That's why when John tried to prevent Jesus from being baptized by him, saying, look, I have need to be baptized by you and you came to me. John answered him saying, let it be now for it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, in other words, Jesus was saying, I am on the earth to do what my father has told me to do. Jesus walked 120 miles in order to be baptized by his cousin John in the river Jordan. Now that's commitment. And beloved, and just like Jesus, all of us have a mission, a purpose, a calling, a gift, to commit ourselves to. The word says, let your light so shine before men, women, boys, and girls that they see your good works and give God glory. So as a church of Jesus Christ, we have a clear mission. The mission of the church is to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I don't understand why we don't understand our mission sometimes. We have been uh, accepting our own individual missions, but we also have collective missions that will please God. And being obedient to God's word always pleases him. Now, I know there's somebody watching this podcast has a mission to change the subject sometime. You know, when people want to talk about where they went to school, whether they're Democrat or Republicans, change the subject. When somebody's talking about their sororities or fraternities, oh, that's a wonderful thing, but change the subject. When somebody wants to talk about politics, change the subject and start talking about God. Talk about Jesus. Talk about the Holy Spirit. Go on, do it. I don't know who you are, but God knows. And somebody watching this video has a calling on your life to make sure that some foster child 
has a home to be raised in. Maybe it's your home. I don't know. Oh, but God knows. Somebody, somebody watching has a purpose when the church tries to do something new to get on the phone. And instead of criticizing this new endeavor, you are going to talk this new thing up so much that the church project cannot fail. God loves his church. I don't know who you are, but God knows. Beloved, all of us have Give submission, talents, or calling to do something for the upbuilding of God's kingdom here on earth. All of us. Somebody say everybody. And if we want to please God, uh, then we must be committed to understanding and executing what that is. Jesus was clear about his mission on earth. And that was pleasing to God. You know what? As an elder pastor in the church, my goal, my desire, my ambition is to finish the assignment God has given me so that my life would have given God glory. Know God's mission and do the mission and please God. No excuses. Secondly, God was well pleased with Jesus because Jesus was fearless in his faith in God. Oh, child of God, we must realize that the baptism of Jesus was just not an ordinary baptism. No, it was actually the inauguration of his three-year journey from the Jordan to Calvary. Listen to this, listen to this. First, Jesus will be driven out to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit after he's baptized to engage in a boxing match with the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. Then Jesus will have three years to train a motley group of 12 men and several women uh, to change the world forever. Then in his final days, Jesus will face persecution, trial, and crucifixion. All of it beginning with that baptism. And Jesus knew what he was getting himself into. But he went forth anyway because he was fearless in his faith. Jesus had a faith in God that could conquer anything. Somebody say amen. Amen. Child of God is not always an easy thing to please the Lord. Because living for God is not always easy. After all, we are human beings and our flesh is weak. We think of what we want much more than we think of what God wants. An older person gave me this wisdom. They told me, say, only the strong survive, Pastor. Oh, we cannot be weak in our faith. Beloved, have there been times in your life when you were really tempted to do something that you knew was not the right thing to do? Oh, come on now. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Why, of course you have. When you wanted to fight or lie or slip out with someone or gossip or cheat or was jealous of your neighbor, you know what I'm talking about. Well, the truth is that we who are Christians, we're not supposed to do some things. Why? Because we are Christians. Listen, if you are a real, shown up, bona fide Christian, your conscience, which is the Holy Spirit, will make you know it's wrong and then make you feel really bad uh, that you fail for the hokey doke. They don't feel shame, some people who are not Christian. They don't feel no shame. They don't feel guilt or sorrow. And they can get away with it temporarily. <laughs> oh, but for you and me, we can't roll like that. We do it and then afterward we feel so bad and I'm right about it. You know, we can't stop thinking about how stupid we were, how weak we were, how ugly we were, how low we went. Then we start crying and asking God to forgive us. And oh, that's such a good thing. That's evidence that we are a real Holy Spirit filled Christian. It means you and I have a God conscience. Now, you do not know that there is a medical name for people. You do know that. 
who do not have a conscience, don't you? They are called sociopaths. <laughs> but that's not what we want to be called. Why? Because we Christians. When your conscience, the Holy Spirit, talks to us, we listen. Because we want to please God. Therefore, we act like a Christian ought to act. We, we make apology. We try to fix it. Any problem we call, we desire to, to mend a bad situation. We want to stop a bad habit. We, we want to change our wicked ways because it is our heart's desire to be and do better. We want to please God. We are Christians. And pleasing God with our actions means everything to us. And you know, sometimes we must speak the truth when everybody else is quiet. And sometimes we must be ridiculed and talked about for doing the right thing. And to please God, we will willingly sacrifice what we want for what God wants. And we must be fearless. We must be determined and we must possess holy boldness when we confess our faith in God. We just can't care what people will say all the time when we are fearless about our faith in God. Because God says we are more than a conqueror. God says that he has plans for us. We can't care about what we must give up because God says to deny ourselves Pick up our cross and follow him. Oh, when we are fearless about our faith in God, we'll walk through the valley. We'll stand in the midst of the storm. Oh, we may not win any popularity contest with people when we're fearless about our faith in God. But people don't have the last word. Oh, but when we do what pleases God, oh, when we act like Jesus, when we study God's word, pray without ceasing, give sacrificiously, dream unreasonably, serve wholeheartedly, love unashamedly, walk, walk, and not get weary, believe undoubtedly, and live powerfully under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God is pleased with you and me. And if God is pleased, then that's more than enough. Oh, I want to hear somebody say, well done. Don't you? Yes. Thirdly, God was well pleased with Jesus because Jesus was humble in his walk. Now, true humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Yeah, right. Uh, he, he didn't want to even go through the proper protocol according to the rules. Jesus should have been the one baptizing John instead of John baptizing Jesus. Because after all, Jesus was the greater and John was the lesser. And even John himself said, the one coming after me is mightier than I. The laces of whose shoes I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Oh my God. And John was right. But Jesus did away with the protocol this one time. Jesus tossed aside the rules this time. Somebody ought to ask me why. Why? So that he could demonstrate in an exceedingly preeminent way what true humility and submission was all about. Is thinking of yourself less one of the most fail-safe ways to have genuine relationship with God is to be submissive before the Lord. Now, some people think that humble, being humble and submissive means being weak and wimpy. No, no, no. But the strongest and the most spiritually powerful people I know are those people who have humbled themselves and submitted themselves to the Lord. It's just easy to submit yourself to people. People who say, not my will, but God's will be done in my life. And so Jesus says, the last shall be first. Jesus says, the person that humbles himself or herself will be exalted. When you are doing what pleases God, child of God, you do not have to run up front 
You can sit in the back with your anointed self and the anointing on you will still destroy any yokes in the room. Glory to God. When you are doing what pleases God, you don't have to politic your way. Your gifts will make room for you. Hallelujah. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit and determined to please the Lord, you don't have to kiss up to people or demean yourself. You'll get respect from telling the truth because your boldness is holy. Mm, mm, mm. When you are going and doing what pleases God, you don't have to trip out. Because God will go before you and make your way straight. Oh, I need to get an amen. Fourthly, fourthly, God was well pleased with Jesus because Jesus was open to the Holy Spirit. Oh, Christian, you have to be open to receive the Holy Spirit. And so in the gospel, when Jesus ascends out of the Jordan River after being baptized by John, the Holy Spirit of God descends on him and in the form of a dove. Listen, one of the reasons Jesus became human was to show us how to depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit. This is wrong with the church. We got the Holy Spirit. The only, the only thing Jesus had to depend upon, Jesus during the sojourn here on earth was the power of the Holy Spirit. And listen, if Jesus depended on the power of the Holy Spirit and he was fully God, what about you and me? What about us? Beloved, know this. When Jesus healed the sick, it was by the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus opened the eyes of the blind, it was by the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus fed the hungry, when Jesus saved the lost, when Jesus saved the wicked, it was the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the same way, the only thing we have going for us is the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot please God without the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me today, anointing, fall on me. Beloved, please, God means that we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want to do what God tells us to do. And we want to be fearless in our faith in God. And just to sum all these godly attributes up, let, let me tell you this. Here it is. Love the Lord our God. With all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Oh, beloved. Beloved, today we love to talk about what we love. We easily say, I love that. I love this. We say we love our houses. We love our children. We love our cars. We love our clothes. We love our families and our friends. Oh, but however... The most important love of our lives, the most important person in our lives, the most important subject in our lives, the answer to all of our personal and worldly problems is this, to be in love with Jesus. Oh, if you want to please God, then we have to fall deeply in love with his son. Jesus is the answer for this crazy world today. Beside him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. You want to please God, I know that you do. Then fall in love with Jesus. The songwriter says it like this. Falling in love with Jesus, my Lord. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that I've ever, ever done in his arms. I feel protected in his arms. Never feel disconnected in his arms. I feel protected. It's the best thing I've ever, ever done. Please, God, today, and fall in love with Jesus. Falling in love 
with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Is the best thing I've ever that this word from the Lord has blessed you. And so I now open the doors of God's church and invite you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ because it's time to become obedient to God. He's not coming back for y'all stuff. He's coming back for his church. So put your name on the church roll and give your tithes and your offerings and share your gifts and talents to God's church. I invite you to go to our website. And there you'll find a form to join the church. Fill it out. We will contact you. And on that website, you will also find a way to give. Go to www.pacoimafumc.com slash giving. And then I hope that you'll say amen to this service by hitting the thumbs up button and by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It means a lot. It means that we know you're here because numbers count in Jesus. Spread the word of God. Spread the word of God. Please him by sharing this video. And now to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever.